So our speaker today is uh, Natalia Bandarenka, representing two universities, Saratov State University and Samara National Research University, and she will speak about inverse spectral problems for the matrix sturm liouville operator. Please, Natalia. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, uh, I'd like to say that uh, I'm grateful to the organizers of this uh, seminar uh, for the opportunity uh, to give this talk. Uh, well. my, talk uh, uh, my talk is devoted uh, to the theory of inverse spectral uh, problems. Uh, such problems uh, consist in the recovery of uh, differential operators. Uh, from the spectral uh, characteristics. Uh, here is uh, the plan of my talk. Uh, first, uh, I'll start from uh, the historical background of the problem, and I will tell about uh, uh, the classical uh, scalar uh, Sturm-Liouville inverse problems. Um, then I'll proceed to uh, the matrix uh, Sturm-Liouville inverse problems, uh, to the historical background and uh, the problem uh, statement. Uh, then we will consider uh, the main results. Uh, then I will say I will say a couple of words about uh, the method of uh, spectral mappings, uh, which is uh, the main method of investigation. Uh, and uh, finally, um, uh, we consider application of the main uh, results uh, for the matrix uh, Sturm-Liouville operator uh, to uh, quantum graphs, uh, to differential operators on graphs. Uh, so first, um, let's start from um, the scalar uh, Sturm-Liouville uh, problems. Uh, the most complete results in the inverse problem theory uh, have been obtained um, for the Sturm-Liouville equation uh, one. Uh, here, um, uh, Q of x is uh, the function uh, which is traditionally called the potential. Uh, lambda is the spectral uh, parameter. Uh, this equation is usually considered uh, on a finite interval with some uh, boundary conditions, uh, or it can be considered on the half line or on the line. Uh, and uh, inverse uh, spectral uh, problems uh, consist in the uh, reconstruction of the potential uh, core um, from some spectral data, uh, for example, from the eigenvalues and some additional uh, characteristics. Uh, the, uh, uh, classical results uh, of the inverse problem theory for the Sturm-Liouville equation um, uh, were obtained uh, in the second half of the 20th century and uh, uh, can be found uh, in the uh, monographs uh, by uh, Marchenka, um, Levitan, and uh, in the more recent monograph uh, by Fralin and Yurko. Uh, Consider the Sturm-Liouville equation on a finite um, interval. Um, suppose that the potential is uh, a real valued uh, function uh, from uh, the class L2. Uh, and uh, uh, it's well known uh, that uh, in this case, the potential is uniquely specified uh, by uh, each of the following uh, three sets of spectral uh, characteristics. Uh, uh, the first one uh, are the, uh, is the uh, eigenvalues uh, lambda and g of uh, the two boundary value problems uh, for uh, equation one uh, with uh, these boundary conditions. Mm. So uh, we consider um, the two boundary value problems for the same uh, equation with the same potential uh, for g equals uh, one uh, for g equals zero the problem has the directly directly boundary conditions and for g equals uh, one it ha uh, we have uh, directly Neumann uh, boundary conditions. Uh, it is well known that uh, each of these two problems um, has uh, a discrete uh, spectrum, and uh, this uh, spectrum is a countable set um, of uh, real eigenvalues. Uh, uh, and uh, um, it's known that uh, these two spectra uh, uniquely specify uh, the potential core. Uh, this was proved uh, by Borg in uh, 1946. So this is, uh, was the, uh, this is uh, the first inverse problem. Uh, the second one, um, 
is uh, the recovery of the potential core uh, from the uh, eigenvalues of uh, one spectrum, uh, say of uh, lambda n zero, uh, and uh, the weight numbers uh, alpha n, uh, which are defined uh, by this formula, uh, where s of x lambda is the solution of equation one, uh, satisfying uh, these initial conditions. Uh, this solution is often called uh, the sign type uh, solution. Uh, if we substitute here lambda n, s of x lambda n are the uh, eigenfunctions uh, of uh, the boundary value problem with the directly boundary conditions. Uh, and uh, uh, alpha n are the squares of the norms of, uh, uh, of the eigenfunctions. Uh, uh, this problem uh, by uh, the eigenvalues and the weight numbers uh, is equivalent um, to the problem considered uh, by Marchinka, uh, who recovered the potential core, uh, from the spectral function. Uh, and uh, the third uh, problem, um, uh, uh, the third uh, character uh, spectral characteristic uh, which uniquely specifies the potential is uh, the uh, wild function. Uh, defined uh, by this formula. Mm. Uh, this solution is an uh, uh, entire analytic function in lambda for each fixed uh, x. And uh, so here we have uh, uh, the ratio of two uh, entire functions. Uh, so the wild function is the meromorphic function. Uh, and uh, uh, actually uh, all these uh, three inverse problems uh, by the um, eigenvalues, uh, uh, by the two spectra, by the eigenvalues and the weight numbers, and by the wild function, uh, they all are equivalent uh, to each other. Uh, indeed, it's easy to show that uh, uh, lambda n0 are uh, uh, the poles, and lambda n1 are the zeros of uh, the wild function, uh, because uh, lambda n0 are the zeros of uh, uh, the denominator and uh, lambda and one are the zeros of the uh, uh, nominator. Uh, and uh, uh, inverse values to alpha n are the residues of uh, the wild function with respect to its poles. So if we have the wild function, we can find uh, the two spectra or we can find uh, the eigenvalues and the weight numbers. Uh, and uh, on the contrary, if we have for example, if we have uh, the two spectra, we can construct uh, the wild function. Uh, there is uh, a certain formula um, for this. And uh, also the wild function can be constructed by uh, 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 lambda n and alpha n. Uh, so in the uh, scalar case, all these uh, three uh, classical inverse problems are equivalent. Uh, 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 next, further, we focus on the problem uh, by the spectral data. Uh, and uh, this is uh, also uh, the classical uh, result. Um, uh, consider the boundary value problem for the Sturm-Liouville equation with the Dirichlet boundary conditions. Um, and uh, the following uh, theorem um, gives uh, the spectral data characterization uh, in the scalar case. Um, for uh, numbers alpha, uh, lambda n and alpha n to be the spectral data uh, of this problem 1, 2, uh, with a real valued potential uh, from the class L2, uh, the following conditions are necessary and sufficient. Uh, lambda n have to be real and uh, distinct. Uh, alpha n, uh, the weight numbers, uh, have to be positive. Uh, and uh, mm, uh, uh, Lambda and alpha n have to satisfy uh, this asymptotics. Uh, this asymptotics. Uh, uh, first, uh, the uh, necessary and sufficient conditions uh, for the solvability of the inverse problem were obtained uh, in the fundamental paper by Gilfand uh, in, uh, and uh, Levitan. Uh, but uh, actually, uh, in the paper, there was a gap. Uh, between necessary and sufficient conditions. So it, it was not, uh, uh, the result was not uh, exactly in this form, uh, but later the result uh, was improved and uh, this, is, this fact is uh, well known. Uh, if we take uh, 
any numbers uh, satisfying these uh, conditions, uh, then uh, they define they are the spectral data of some potential, and uh, this potential can be found by uh, constructive methods. Uh, uh, these are the main results uh, for the scalar inverse problems uh, that we need uh, today. And now um, let's proceed to the matrix case. Uh, in this talk, uh, we consider the matrix uh, Stuhl-Neuville equation, uh, where uh, the potential is uh, a matrix function. Uh, we suppose uh, that the potential is singular, uh, it belongs to this class. Uh, this notation means um, that we have uh, uh, a matrix of size M times M, and uh, each element of this matrix is from this class. Uh, uh, this is uh, the class of uh, generalized functions. Uh, so uh, core is uh, the derivative uh, of uh, some matrix function uh, sigma, which is of class L2. Uh, the derivative is understood in the sense of distributions. Uh, and uh, additionally, we assume that uh, sigma um, is a Hermitian matrix. So we have the self-adjoint situation. Uh, in fact, we don't need uh, here to work with uh, generalized functions uh, because uh, equation five can be represented in the equivalent form six, uh, where um, sigma is uh, this matrix function and uh, uh, this notation is used uh, for the quasi-derivative. It can be easily shown by uh, direct calculations uh, that these two forms are equivalent. And further, we will consider this equation uh, six. Uh, uh, the theory of uh, direct and inverse. Uh, is there any question? No, I think no. Please. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, mm, the theory of uh, direct and inverse spectral problems uh, mm, has been uh, uh, rapidly developed uh, in recent, uh, in the last uh, 20 years. Uh, and uh, um, such problems uh, for uh, uh, for differential operators with uh, distribution coefficients uh, were studied by uh, the mentioned authors and by uh, many others. Uh, here, it's important to mention uh, their works by uh, Savchuk and Shkalikov, uh, who developed the theory of direct problems for this equation in the scalar case, when m equals 1. Uh, and uh, the results of uh, Hrinev and uh, uh, Mikituk, uh, who uh, also considered uh, the uh, Stone-Neville equation with singular potential uh, in the scalar case, uh, and uh, they uh, uh, transferred uh, the, uh, uh, one of the main methods of inverse problem theory, the gelfand levitan method, uh, to the inverse uh, problems, and uh, so obtained uh, uh, they generalized many uh, uh, classical results uh, to the case of uh, the potential from this class in the scalar case. Uh, uh, what about the uh, matrix uh, Stuhl-Neuville uh, inverse problems? Uh, the majority of the studies on uh, matrix Stuhl-Neuville inverse problems on a finite interval uh, deal with the, uh, the uh, Dirichlet boundary conditions all with the Robin boundary conditions. Uh, in particular, uh, the uniqueness uh, theorems um, for inverse problems um, in various uh, statements uh, were proved uh, by Carlson, uh, Chibanov, Mulamud, um, Yurko, and uh, other. Uh, uh, there are also other works. Uh, uh, next, uh, Yurko um, proposed uh, an idea of a constructive solution for the uh, matrix uh, Sturm-Leville inverse problems. Uh, and uh, in the uh, next uh, three papers by uh, Chilkak and Karatyev, Mikituk and Trash, and in my paper, uh, the spectral data characterization was obtained uh, in three different uh, problem uh, statements uh, by three different methods. Uh, the uh, majority of the mentioned papers uh, uh, deal with uh, the regular potentials of class L2. And only uh, uh, these uh, 
uh, paper uh, deals with uh, the singular potential with the distribution potential. Uh, and all, all these papers, uh, I remind you, have uh, the uh, directly all the Robin boundary conditions. Uh, then uh, the preprint by Chilkak and Matvienka appeared. Uh, as far as I know, it uh, it wasn't published. Uh, it, it hasn't been published in the journal yet. Uh, and uh, later on, there appeared uh, the paper uh, by uh, Su. Mm. Uh, with analogous results. Uh, in these papers, the uh, uniqueness uh, theorems were proved uh, for the matrix uh, Sturm-Liouville equation uh, with the boundary conditions of this form. Mm. This is uh, the general form of uh, separated uh, self-adjoint uh, boundary conditions. Uh, here, mm, all these uh, coefficients are m times m uh, matrices. Uh, Tg are orthogonal projectors. Uh, uh, and uh, so uh, here are the properties to which uh, these matrices uh, satisfy. Mm. Uh, this form of the boundary conditions, as far as I know, uh, was introduced uh, in relation with the study of uh, differential operators on graphs. Uh, because uh, this boundary value problem, uh, this uh, matrix uh, problem, generalizes mm, uh, the Sturm-Liouville problems on uh, geometrical graphs. Uh, and, the, and that's why such conditions uh, uh, cause it interest. Uh, but uh, in these papers, only the uniqueness uh, theorems were proved. Uh, there were no uh, constructive solution and uh, no spectral data characterization. Uh, I think because, uh, it, it, because uh, this problem is rather technically uh, complicated uh, and uh, have some complicated structural properties. Uh, I also should mention uh, that um, for the matrix uh, Stimuli-Ville operators, inverse scattering problems um, were studied on the half line and uh, also on the line. Uh, there is uh, the well-known monograph by uh, Gromovich and Marchenka, uh, where the inverse problem on the half line with the Dirichlet boundary condition was considered. And I uh, here also uh, have mentioned uh, uh, the three papers, uh, the papers by Heimer and uh, uh, the recent monograph by Atasun and Vedder um, uh, on the inverse scattering problem on the half line um, with the um, general self adjoint boundary condition, uh, which is equivalent to this condition. Uh, these papers have a slightly different form uh, of the boundary condition, but uh, uh, they are equivalent uh, to, to, to this one. Uh, uh, and uh, in, in these uh, studies, uh, the results by Agarnovich and Marchenka were um, generalized uh, uh, to the case of more general boundary condition, uh, and uh, also uh, they were applied uh, to graphs. Uh, you see here uh, Schrodinger operator on graph graphs. Uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, the uh, scattering problems uh, on the half line and on the line, uh, in some sense, are easier than uh, inverse problems uh, on the finite interval because uh, on the finite uh, interval uh, uh, we have uh, an infinite. Uh, a sequence of uh, eigenvalues, and uh, we need to work uh, with uh, the asymptotics. Uh, but uh, on the half line and on the line, uh, uh, usually we have a, fi a finite uh, discrete spectrum. Uh, and in some sense, the situation is easier. But of course, uh, uh, these uh, problems on the half line and on the line, they have uh, their own difficulties, and they require uh, some different technique. Uh, uh, the main results uh, of uh, my talk are published in these two uh, recent papers. And uh, in these papers, the inverse problem is considered for the boundary value problem L uh, of this form. Uh, so here we have uh, uh, the equation which is equivalent to the matrix uh, equation with the singular potential. Uh, and here are the boundary conditions in the general self-adjoint form. Uh, 
Now, the Poland main results are obtained. Uh, uh, there are uh, the uniqueness uh, theorems, uh, constructive solution of the inverse problem, and uh, also the spectral data uh, characterization. Uh, the first uh, theorem um, describes the, uh, the behavior of the spectrum of the problem L. Uh, this problem has um, the countable set of uh, real eigenvalues. Uh, it's convenient to number them in this way by two indices, N and K, uh, according to the asymptotics. Uh, here, K is from 1 to M, and N, um, for some K, uh, N are natural numbers, and uh, for some K, uh, they begin from zero. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, we will not elaborate into details with these uh, notations. What is important here is that um, here we have RK. Uh, uh, here they are um, completely described. They are the zeros of uh, the certain function. Uh, these numbers uh, can all be uh, distinct. Uh, all some of them uh, may coincide. Uh, and uh, um, the difference from the matrix case uh, from the scalar one is that uh, we can have um, an infinite number of uh, um, groups of multiple eigenvalues. If some RK uh, uh, coincide with each other, uh, then uh, uh, these uh, eigenvalues can be multiple. Uh, and uh, even if they are simple, uh, we, get, uh, we can get uh, asymptotically multiple um, eigenvalues. If there are... Uh, uh, for example, two sequences with the same uh, coefficient. Uh, so here are the uh, eigenvalue asymptotics. Mm, uh, together with the uh, eigenvalues, we need um, some addition uh, to define uh, some additional uh, characteristics. Uh, uh, start from some uh, definitions. Mm, the while solution of the problem L is the matrix solution phi of x lambda of uh, equation 10. Uh, 10 was the matrix uh, Stumlewil equation, satisfying uh, these boundary conditions. Uh, V1 and V2 are the linear forms from the boundary conditions of the considered problem. And uh, the Weil matrix uh, is defined by the Weil solution um, by its values uh, value uh, at zero. Uh, now, the uh, Weil matrix is the natural spectral characteristic for the matrix Stumlewil operators, and uh, uh, the Weil um, uh, matrices appeared in uh, the papers uh, uh, of by uh, Yulko, by Chilkak and Karatyev, by uh, Mikituk and Trash, and uh, um, by other authors uh, who studied uh, those problems uh, for the matrix uh, Stumlewil operators. Uh, uh, this matrix function uh, is meromorphic in the lambda plane, and uh, its uh, singularities uh, are simple poles, which coincide with the eigenvalues of A. Uh, we define uh, the uh, weight matrices as the residues of uh, this meromorphic fun function uh, with respect to its poles. And uh, mm, the collection of uh, the eigenvalues and the weight matrices is called the spectral data of A. Uh, this uh, spectral data um, generalize uh, the spectral data, uh, which is uh, standard for the scalar Stumlewil equation, and uh, uh, our inverse problem will generalize the statement uh, by Marchenko. Uh, the next uh, theorem is rather, is rather technical, and it's, it contains uh, Asympto uh, the asymptotics for the weight uh, matrices. Uh, and uh, we obtain uh, the asymptotics for the sums uh, of the weight matrices. Uh, let me better uh, explain uh, the main idea um, uh, on a, a picture. Uh, uh, remind that uh, the eigenvalues have uh, these asymptotics. Uh, uh, so for sufficiently large uh, M, um, uh, they uh, split into uh, such groups uh, by RK. Uh, for example, if R1 equals R2, uh, R2 equals R3, then we have uh, three uh, eigenvalues, square, root, square roots of eigenvalues uh, close to each other. And uh, here we have uh, the second group uh, with R4 equals R5. And 
we obtain the asymptotic formulas for the weight matrices for the for the sum of uh, uh, the weight uh, matrices uh, for each group. Uh, so, uh, these asymptotics are obtained and uh, all the values participating here are described. Uh, uh, without loss of uh, general, generality, uh, we assume that uh, the coefficient h1 uh, in the first uh, boundary condition equals zero. Uh, one can achieve uh, this condition uh, by, uh, the, by the transform, which doesn't change uh, the spectral data. So we can apply this transform and consider the problem L, uh, which uh, doesn't contain uh, the coefficient H1. Uh, and uh, the inverse problem is formulated as follows. Uh, given the spectral data, the eigenvalues and the weight matrices, uh, find uh, the coefficients of the boundary value problem L. Uh, to formulate uh, the uniqueness uh, theorems, we need some additional uh, notations. Uh, along with L, uh, consider another boundary value problem L with tilde uh, of the same form, but with different uh, coefficients, uh, sigma with tilde, T1, uh, tilde, T2, tilde, and uh, H2 with tilde. Uh, we agree that if uh, some symbol denotes an object related to L, then the, the same symbol with tilde uh, denotes uh, the similar object related to L with tilde. Mm. And uh, by using these notations, mm. uh, we formulate the uniqueness theorem. If uh, the spectral data of the problem without tilde and of the problem with tilde coincide, then uh, the coefficients uh, also coincide uh, up to some uh, transform, uh, uh, which is uh, given by uh, a matrix uh, H1 uh, with diamond, which satisfies uh, this condition. Uh, those, uh, the spectral data uniquely specify the problem A up to um, a transform uh, 18 given by an arbitrary matrix satisfying 19. Uh, if we consider not the spectral data but uh, the uh, while matrices and uh, if we uh, suppose that the while matrices coincide, uh, then uh, the coefficients will coincide uh, without uh, uh, this ambiguity. Mm -hmm. Actually, this result mm, uh, is a natural generalization of the known results uh, for the scalar case. Uh, because uh, for uh, the scalar case, if we have uh, the scalar equation of this form, uh, and uh, if we consider different types of uh, boundary conditions, that we, uh, then we have slightly different situation. If we have the directly directly boundary conditions, then um, the spectral data um, specify uh, the function sigma up to a constant. Uh, if we have uh, such a form of uh, the boundary conditions, uh, then uh, the spectral data specify uh, sigma uniquely without this constant. Uh, and uh, also, there are known results for other types of uh, boundary conditions. Uh, mm, uh, These results uh, mm, will, uh, follow from the paper uh, by Hrinev and Mikituk and uh, by Gulliev. Uh, and uh, mm, uh, theorem three uh, generalizes uh, all these four uh, cases uh, to the matrix situation. Uh, that's why we have here some non-uniqueness. Uh, uh, now let's proceed to uh, the spectral data uh, characterization. Uh, to formulate uh, the theorem about uh, the characterization, uh, we need some additional notation. Uh, we need to define the sequence uh, X of uh, vector functions X and K. Um, it's, uh, I think it's also not necessary to elaborate into these uh, definitions. Uh, what is important is that X and K is defined uh, by uh, the eigenvalues and by the um, weight matrices. So if we, uh, if we know the eigenvalues and the weight matrices, we can construct uh, this uh, sequence. And uh, the next uh, theorem gives the spectral data characterization. 
Uh, let uh, T1 and T2 be an uh, arbitrary fixed orthogonal projection uh, matrices. Then for a collection uh, lambda and k, alpha and k, to be the spectral data of uh, some problem L, uh, the following conditions are necessary and sufficient. Uh, the first condition, um, lambda and k have to be real. Alpha and k are m times m matrices, uh, which are Hermitian and non-negative uh, definite. Uh, ranks of alpha and k um, are equal to the multiplicities of the corresponding values uh, lambda and k. Uh, and if uh, and uh, if uh, uh, two lambda and k uh, coincide, coincide, then the corresponding matrices also coincide. Uh, the second uh, condition, the asymptotic uh, relations uh, uh, 13 and 17 hold. This uh, 13 and 17 are uh, the asymptotics uh, for the eigenvalues and for the weight matrices, uh, which were formulated in theorems 1 and 2. Uh, and uh, these coefficients which appear in this asymptotics, uh, they are defined uh, by the formulas in theorems 1 and 2 uh, by using uh, this fixed T1 and T2. And uh, the third condition is that uh, the sequence X um, is complete um, in the uh, corresponding space L2. Uh, this condition uh, is different from the scalar case. Uh, in the scalar case, it, uh, we have only uh, some kind of the first condition and uh, the asymptotics. Uh, the, uh, the third condition in the scalar case uh, holds automatically, but in the matrix case, we have to require it. Mm. Uh, next, uh, I will say a couple of words about uh, the proof of uh, the method of the proof of this uh, theorem. Uh, the proof of uh, theorem five and the constructive solution of the inverse problem are based um, on the method of spectral mappings. Uh, this uh, method was developed uh, by uh, Yulko uh, for the higher order uh, differential operators because of, uh, for the higher order differential operators, uh, other methods uh, uh, are uh, ineffective. Uh, and uh, in this uh, monograph, uh, this method is provide, uh, uh, is described for regular potentials. Uh, uh, for, uh, uh, for singular potentials, uh, until the recent time, uh, there was the only paper by Friday, Ignatiev and Yulko. Uh, they studied uh, some problem on uh, a star type graph. Uh, and uh, in this paper, they, uh, uh, obtained a, a constructive solution of the inverse problem uh, by some version of the method of spectral mappings uh, generalized to singular potentials. Uh, but uh, actually the results uh, uh, did not uh, allow one to um, prove the uh, uh, to obtain the characterization, uh, because uh, to prove uh, for proof of uh, the characterization theorem, uh, uh, some uh, more precise version of the method is required. Uh, and uh, uh, later in my paper, uh, the method was uh, uh, transferred uh, um, to the uh, apparatus, uh, was completely uh, generalized to the uh, problems with singular potentials. Uh, uh, and the, uh, in this paper, the spectral data characterization uh, theorem is proved for the scalar case. And uh, then it was uh, generalized to the matrix case. Uh, uh, let me briefly describe uh, the idea. Uh, uh, the main technical tool of uh, this method is the contour integration in the lambda plane. Uh, so there are some functions which are integrated uh, in the plane of the spectral, uh, in the complex plane of the spectral uh, parameter. Uh, and uh, mm, this method allows uh, us to uh, reduce uh, a nonlinear inverse problem to a linear main equation uh, in a, uh, a Banach space. Uh, this Banach uh, space is, uh, is specific for uh, each problem. 
so it, it, it's different, for, for example, for scalar case and uh, for the matrix case. Uh, uh, the main equation can be written in such form where uh, phi uh, and uh, phi with tilde are the elements of uh, the space B. Uh, R uh, with tilde is uh, the linear bounded operator in B and I is the unit operator. Uh, phi with tilde and R with tilde uh, are constructed uh, by the given data, uh, by the eigenvalues and the weight matrices. Uh, and uh, the uh, phi, uh, phi here is uh, the unknown element, and uh, it's related uh, to the unknown coefficients sigma and h2. Uh, if we solve uh, this equation, we find uh, phi, and then we can use um, it to uh, find uh, the desired uh, coefficients. Uh, in the scalar case, B is the space of infinite bounded sequences uh, with the norm, um, uh, the supremum um, of the absolute values. Uh, in the matrix case, uh, because of these difficulties uh, related with uh, the eigenvalue asymptotics, because uh, as I have already said, um, Mm, the eigenvalues can be multiple or they can be asymptotically multiple. Uh, mm, we need uh, the special construction of the Banach space, uh, uh, which is constructed by using the grouping uh, of the eigenvalues with respect to the asymptotics. Uh, each element of uh, this sequence is related not with uh, uh, one eigenvalue, but with uh, a group of eigenvalues. So the uh, uh, the construction is uh, different. And uh, also there are um, serious difficulties uh, caused uh, by the fact uh, that uh, we have the distribution potential. Uh, and uh, in this case, uh, the most difficult part is the proof of the main equation solvability by sufficiency. Uh, if we don't know that uh, lambda and k and alpha and k are the spectral data of some problem L, if they are just some numbers uh, satisfying uh, the asymptotics and other properties, uh, the most difficult part uh, of the proof is to show that uh, uh, this equation has uh, the unique solution. Uh, to show the invert uh, uh, invertibility of this operator. So, uh, and these uh, this difficulties were overcome um, uh, in my recent paper that I uh, have mentioned. Uh, so uh, there were a few, few words about uh, the method of spectral mappings. Uh, and now um, uh, uh, let me show you applications uh, of these results to uh, differential operators on graphs. And uh, uh, we consider the most simple uh, situation, uh, the Stubbeville problem on the star-shaped graph. Uh, we uh, consider the graph of uh, this form with m h, uh, each h uh, can be considered as uh, the segment uh, zero pi. Uh, for definiteness, we suppose that zero uh, corresponds uh, to the boundary vertex and pi corresponds to the internal vertex. Uh, and with uh, each on each h, we have uh, an equation associated with this h um, uh, for g from one to m. Uh, here, uh, uh, there are um, uh, the scalar equations and uh, sigma g are real valid functions uh, of the space L2. In the boundary vertices, we have uh, the directly boundary conditions and at the internal vertex, uh, we have uh, the continuity condition and uh, uh, this condition. Uh, which uh, generalize uh, the standard Kirchhoff uh, condition, uh, which appears uh, in applications. Uh, uh, so we have uh, such boundary value problem. Uh, it's easy to see that uh, this problem uh, can be represented in the matrix form that we have uh, considered before, uh, where uh, the matrix uh, sigma is uh, the diagonal matrix with uh, these elements sigma g on the main diagonal. Uh, T1 and T2 are certain, uh, and H2 are the certain constant uh, matrices. Uh, mm -hmm. 
the inverse problem is formulated as follows. Mm, given the spectral data, uh, find uh, sigma g and uh, the coefficient h. Uh, the coefficient h appear here in the matching condition. Uh, the spectral data is defined in the, sa in the same way as it was defined for the matrix Stunnevill operator. Uh, uh, in the case of, uh, uh, this is the problem for singular potentials, but in the case of regular potentials, uh, this problem statement is equivalent uh, to the problem considered in the paper by Brown and Weikert. Uh, uh, they considered the reconstruction of the Stone-Neville operator on a graph by the generalized Dreyfus to Neumann map. Uh, the problem is uh, analogous to this one. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, later it was proved uh, that uh, this problem is uh, overdetermined. Uh, it, uh, it requires too much uh, spectral data. Uh, uh, Yurko um, proved uh, the uniqueness uh, theorem um, uh, for the star shape, shape graph and uh, actually for graphs of modular structure by a less amount of spectral data. Uh, you see here we take uh, all the eigenvalues and the complete weight matrices, uh, but Yurko proved that it's sufficient uh, It's sufficient to take uh, only the eigenvalues and uh, to take uh, the main diagonals from the weight matrices um, except one element. So for each uh, weight matrix, uh, we take uh, its diagonal without uh, one element. Uh, uh, so uh, the coefficients can be uh, constructed by uh, a less amount of data, uh, but uh, for uh, the characterization, it's convenient to use um, uh, 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 this large amount of data uh, because it's convenient to establish uh, some, uh, it's possible to establish uh, some uh, linear uh, conditions uh, on, this, uh, on this data. So uh, the uh, uh, theorem on the uh, spectral data um, characterization uh, um, for the star shape graph, it follows from the theorem um, uh, for the matrix to be operator and it, it's from laser formulated here. Uh, let T2 be the matrix defined on the previous slide for uh, lambda and k and alpha and k to be the spectral data uh, of the problem on the star shape graph. The following conditions are necessary and sufficient. Uh, first condition is the same as for uh, the matrix to reveal operator. Uh, the second condition are the asymptotic relations. Uh, the take a more simple form because here we have a certain structure of the boundary conditions. Mm. The third condition is that the sequence X, X is complete in L2. And uh, also we have the additional fourth condition uh, that uh, the solution phi of the main equation uh, is diagonal for each fixed X. Uh, here uh, the uh, uh, diagonality has uh, some uh, special meaning uh, roughly speaking, uh, phi of x is an infinite sequence of matrices. Uh, we mm, assume that uh, each of uh, these uh, mat uh, matrices is diagonal. Mm. Uh, in the proof of this uh, theorem, it's shown if, uh, that if uh, the first three conditions hold, then uh, the main equation has the unique solution. And if we additionally require that uh, this solution uh, has this diagonality property, uh, then uh, uh, such data will correspond to some problem on the star shape graph. So uh, this, condi this diagonality condition uh, is used to obtain the, uh, the diagonality of the potential matrix. Uh, Mm, this idea also can be applied to um, graphs of more general structure, but uh, then we will obtain a uh, more complicated uh, uh, stru uh, structural uh, structure, uh, condition, uh, structure conditions. Uh, here, mm, uh, we 
need to check this condition for after solving the main equation. But uh, for uh, graphs of more general structure, there are such conditions um, which have to be checked uh, a posteriori after the construction of the uh, uh, problem coefficients. Um, uh, but uh, uh, this approach uh, can be generalized for more general graphs. Uh, okay, I think uh, I have finished. Uh, thank you uh, for your attention. Thank you very much, Natalia, for the very interesting talk. If there are questions. I have some some questions. You, uh, for example, uh, didn't mention uh, another approach, uh, uh, which is uh, called boundary control a method which was developed by a group of uh, persons, Belish, uh, Abdonian and uh, their collaborators. And uh, I think they obtained some results on the, uh, which you mentioned by other methods for at least for quantum graphs. Uh, yes, uh, yes. I, I didn't have time to talk in details about uh, quantum graphs because uh, for them, uh, actually, there are two uh, methods. Uh, one of them uh, uh, is uh, the Yulko method, but uh, also um, there is uh, the boundary control method. Uh, in fact, it's uh, some development of the ideas of the method uh, of the gelfand levitan method. Uh, and... Uh, um, Belichev uh, uh, also in uh, in his paper in 2004, uh, he proved the uniqueness theorem uh, for uh, for the uh, uh, for the Sturm-Liouville operators uh, on uh, uh, arbitrary uh, uh, tree graph uh, graph without cycles mm. and. Uh, this approach uh, was developed uh, in the further studies. Uh, uh, and uh, yes, uh, the, 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 there is such me method, uh, but uh, Yulko, um, he obtained, uh, uh, for, for graphs, he obtained more general results because he, in this paper, he studied uh, the uh, inverse problems uh, uh, on trees, uh, but later uh, he generalized uh, uh, his method to uh, the graphs with uh, cycles. Uh, uh, but uh, the, uh, these papers by Yurko and Belyshev, uh, they concern uh, the uniqueness theorems and uh, constructive solution. And, uh, but uh, the question of necessary and sufficient conditions uh, of inverse problem solvability uh, was open for graphs. Mm -hmm. Natalia, and uh, how uh, the potential is recovered from this function phi from the main equation. Uh, uh, phi is an in infinite sequence, uh, and uh, to recover the potential, uh, 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 some series are constructed of these elements. Uh, I don't provide uh, the formulas here because uh, they require some additional notations. Uh, mm -hmm. But uh, there are certain formulas uh, as, uh, as series for recovering the potential and uh, the boundary condition coefficients. Okay, thank you. If there are questions, please. I have still uh, one more question. Mm -hmm. How important is uh, in in uh, your uh, work is the fact that uh, this uh, quantum star graph, uh, uh, all the edges are of the same length? Uh, it, it's important. Mm, uh, 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 here it's important. And uh, uh, the... Uh, this approach can be applied to um, uh, graphs uh, um, with uh, rationally dependent edge lengths, uh, because if uh, the edge lengths are uh, maybe not equal but uh, rationally dependent, uh, then um, they can be um, divided into unit uh, segments uh, and then um, transformed to um, the matrix form. Uh, 
Uh, but if we have rationally independent uh, lengths, then the situation is more complicated. Then we cannot uh, transform to um, this problem. Uh, and this question, uh, 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 the characterization in the uh, for rationally independent edge lengths uh, was not studied yet. Okay, thank you. More questions, please. I guess sir, it's just here. Yeah. Very nice presentation. Right, right. It was a very interesting talk indeed. Uh, th thank you. Thank you for accepting the invitation. Mm. All guests are sleeping. Uh, well, it, it's always possible. <laughs> <laughs> OK. If there are no questions, then thank you very much. Mm. <laughs> thank you.